Goldenberg. I was a film editor on an imitation game. In the past, I was lucky enough to edit Argo, Zero Dark Thirty, Seabiscuit, The Insider, Heat, Ali, and many others. <laughs> When you're on a film like this and you have a script like this, when you have actors like this, that's when it's really fun. You're not trying to fix something broken. Because there would often be films where you have big story problems, big performance problems. I didn't have those. I had the responsibility of taking all this excellent work and really make something special and hone performances into something really great. Morton and I had a long conversation of what Alan was like as a person, who he was, whether he was Asperger's, whether he was intentionally rude. Go to hell. Whether he was oblivious, didn't understand, you know, and then we kind of settled on the fact that Alan was an incredibly honest person no matter what the circumstance, and he was the same way with everyone, and it was actually a refreshing thing, and then Benedict obviously has the ability to make his arrogance charming. Yeah, Turing, yeah. a mathematician. Correct. However, could I have guessed? Well, you didn't you just read it on that piece of paper? Morton and Benedict, when they were shooting the film, gave us all kinds of different shades so we could really modulate his performance any way we wanted to. You know, Benedict has so much control over himself as an actor. We were able to make him funny without being rude or insensitive or oblivious, and always with the same goal in mind that Alan just being Alan. Alan? Yes? Can you hear me? Yes. You know, the scene where they ask him to go to lunch and he just doesn't hear them and it almost becomes like a who's on first thing. Christ, Alan, it's a bleeding sandwich. What is? Lunch. Oh, I don't like sandwiches. The structure of the film is written as going back and forth in time. <clears throat> Alan, are you all right? Originally, we were very sure that we needed to really make hard delineations between the time periods. And then what we came to realize is this is all one story, so we need to actually blend those time periods together and really treat the audience with respect and give them the credit that they're going to follow along once they see a character from the 50s, they're going to know they're in the 50s. The German army has turned out across Europe. And then we'd move things around just to help the narrative drive to make the story clearer. We, we held off going back to the 20s in the film until much later than it was in the screenplay because we wanted to set the stakes up, set up the world of Bletchley, set up the difficulty of the problem. And then we were able to go back into the 20s and introduce Alan as a young man. And luckily for us, Mark Strong says the line, popular at school, right? And that became an obvious place to cut back to where he was a boy at school. I think my main job is to get into the head of the director, figure out what he or she is trying to say, what film they're trying to make. And then what I think I can bring to the table is I think I'm really good at bringing emotion to situations, that, uh, some innate ability that I have to figure out how to wring emotion out of a film. I think that sometimes it is the people who no one imagines anything of who do the things that no one can imagine. I also think that your job as an editor is the same job as I think all our jobs is to be a storyteller and to never forget that. I mean, what's the scene about and why are we watching that scene? And not only what's the text of the scene, what's the subtext of the scene, what's going on emotionally with each character and trying to make all those layers come to life in the film. You know, I think that I've learned from some really talented people and, I, and I'm hopefully using you know, those lessons to, uh, to help make these films better.